Hey guys, it's Brandon, aka Be Rich Beauty, aka your beauty best friend. Happy Wednesday, y'all! Devon Franklin and Megan Good call it quits. Does Nene Lee have a new love in her life? And we got some new faces for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Baby, we're talking about that and a lot more. You know what to do. Grab your tea, grab your beverage. Let go! Hey, beauty besties, happy hump day, sugar. How y'all doing out there? Oh my gosh, I'm back in the bathroom. You know, I feel like I've been on tour. I went from DC to Atlanta because, you know, he had to get a little, mm-hmm, that. But now I am back, baby. Got ready for Christmas because it is literally like in three days. And y'all know, and I'm gonna talk to y'all real quick because y'all know y'all might be the best friends and we could talk, honey. I was on the phone with Mommy Mel this morning and she was like, uh, you know your bonus sister said that you haven't gone Christmas shopping just yet. And I was like, well, Mommy, I told you I hadn't gone Christmas shopping just yet. But I was thinking to myself, how she know I didn't go Christmas shopping? Oh, wait, <laughs> ah, this show. Thank I love family that supports. And when I tell you the family be showing up and watching the show, thank y'all. But And also, if y'all watching today's episode, just know I am starting my Christmas shopping today because not only did Bonus Dad jump into the conversation to double down on how I didn't buy Christmas gifts just yet. You know the phrase? With the, what's the phrase? It's, um, he may not come when you call him, but he is always on time. I may not be showing up, but your gifts will get to you at some point before the end of the year, sugar. So, y'all enjoy. But I'm going to tell y'all, I actually... I'm already missing my family. There's no, I don't hear bottles of champagne being popped, but guess who's gonna be popping bottles down in Africa? Me. So I will see, you know, it's sometimes you just have to choose self and experience. And I love my family and I see my family all year round, anyways. And so, you know, we'll have a good time in the summertime and next Christmas for sure. Now, my question to y'all, beauty besties is have y'all started Christmas shopping or y'all like me being a little lazy? Y'all let me know. Oh, by the way, since you know I got some time, I'm gonna be at home before I leave to go to Africa, I decided that I was going to do a couple of different things. One, I'm gonna clean out my closet. Two, I'm gonna go online and buy me some clothes for Africa. Cause you know, what does one wear to an African safari? Cause you know, we're going on an African safari, y'all. And if I would be in the middle of the jungle, you know, hanging out with Nala, Simba, and their offsprings, no Roby. If I'm gonna go see where Mufasa is buried and everything else, I, and, and Pride Rock and, and all the, the accoutrements of being in the, in the wild kingdom, I need to make sure I have the right outfit on. Does one wear one of those big hats? Do I wear one of those hats with like the veil over it? Not really the veil, but like one of them beekeeper hats. Do I wear camouflage? Like what does one wear on an African safari? Do I have to wear like lion repellent spray? Because let me tell you something. Giraffes, lions, tigers, oh my, can only get so close to this vehicle. I need to make sure that we got the, the dark guns on deck and everything else in between. But I need to still look fashionable so I can give me one of them good old safari pictures in the background, you know, for the gram and all. So y'all let me know, what am I supposed to wear on this African safari? Because I have no clue. Oh, and by the way, since you know I'm going to be home, aside from cleaning out my closet um, and doing a little Africa shopping, I'm also, I just finished a new show on Netflix. And y'all know, people are on the fence with Kevin Hart. Some people like Kevin, some people don't like Kevin. I'm really indifferent. The short man makes me laugh every now and then. But he has a new show on Netflix called True Story, where Wesley Snipes plays his older brother, which I don't know how Wesley Snipes convinced them to cast him as uh, Kevin Hart's older brother when Wesley Snipes really looks like Kevin Hart's older uncle, you know, the drunk uncle at the picnic and the family reunion. Mm -hmm, that one. That's what Wesley Snipes looked like in his doggone TV show. But Kevin Hart's acting was really good. And I like the storyline. Like Kevin is, you know, playing almost like Kevin in real life. He's a comedian. He's an actor on the show. But yet he gets caught up in an entrapment, honey, and some extortion and all types of crap craziness i'm not gonna give the story away but if y'all got some free time it's a limited series seven episodes it's actually a pretty decent watch and it goes by quick like this it's nice little suspense thriller almost type of thing so i just finished that i am going to watch witcher and there's this new there's not a new show but a, a new show that i just recently discovered like the unbreakable kimmy schmidt or something like that that i want to finish as well while i have some time off from work you know just hanging out in the house with myself fa la 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 around the clock and drinking some champagne now y'all ready for these hot topics let's talk about it 
Well, all right, beauty besties. If you was wishing, hoping, praying, chanting that Mardi Gras was going to actually happen in 2022, it sounds like your wish, your hope, your prayer, and your white candle too may have just been heard because the mayor of New Orleans has just announced that Mardi Gras was returning for 2022. Excuse me, how now? Ma'am, you going to make this announcement as COVID cases are spiking across the country? So you telling me that we about to come out of Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, and if you're a Super Bowl fan, Super Bowl two, and then directly go right into Mardi Gras. And I don't know if y'all have ever been to Mardi Gras. Have you ever been to Mardi Gras? I said I want to go. Every year I say I want to go to Mardi Gras, but it doesn't sound like I'm going in 2022 either. But you can't safely do Mardi Gras, right? Because guess what? If you've never been down to Bourbon Street, let me walk you through it. Picture this, Bourbon Street, hot, humid, right? All types of smells coming from the sewer below you, all types of mysterious liquids in the street, part liquor, part throw up, part sweat, part pee, whatever is your fancy. All of it is happening down here. And now you got people shoulder to shoulder trying to catch beads, showing a little T and A for it all. And some people are on a float. You can't tell me that you are going to get somebody to wear a mask down Bourbon Street while they're stumbling down the street trying to drink their their good old cocktail and catch bees at the same time. It does not sound logical. Does not sound like it's going to be able to work to me. But what it does sound like is a super spreader event. By the way, are people even using the term super spreader anymore? I feel like it just kind of went away the same way people feel like, you know, this pandemic has gone away. Meanwhile, you got... Alpha, Beta, Lambda, Omicron, and Omarion in a corner somewhere waiting for Mardi Gras to happen so they can take folks out and play. And they want to play mass too, okay? They want to catch beads too. Heck, they want to be on the beads. They want to be the moisture particles in the water. They want to be the moisture sweat coming from your brow down to your, to touching the crown of somebody else's head. All of the variants want to play Mardi Gras as well. And so the mayor of New Orleans said, guess what? Y'all want to play Mardi Gras? Y'all want Mardi Gras to happen? Come one, come all. And we will be here to welcome you all into our lovely little city. And don't forget your beignets too, y'all. So y'all going to Mardi Gras? Y'all think it's too soon for us to have Mardi Gras? I know people want to get back to real life, but at what cost? We got these cases spiking. We got folks still out here not getting boosters and shots. And everybody I feel like is sneezing with COVID these days. But y'all let me know. Is she in the right or is she in the wrong? But I'm going to let y'all know where I'm not going to be. New Orleans for Mardi Gras. Let's move on. And a side note, because I know y'all probably thinking, well, beauty best friend, you going to Africa, but you don't want to go to Mardi Gras? Mm-hmm. That's because it's a small group of us going to Africa. We have our own villa. We're not about to be shoulder to shoulder in a mosh pit called Bourbon Street as well, trying to choke down liquor and catch beads in the air. Not to mention all of us that are going on this trip are vaccinated, boosted, and we're wearing our mask, our mask, our mask, or in the words of Audrey Caldwell, we're, we'll wear our mask, our mask, our mask, okay? Okay, so don't come for me, and I'm not judging for I'm not judging anybody that's not vaccinated and boosted. That's your choice, but I'm letting you know, being shoulder to shoulder at Mardi Gras is not only claustrophobia for me, but it's called a super spreader event. That's all I got to say. Now let's move on for real, for real, baby. Y'all heard about the super sexy holy couple Devon Franklin and Megan Good getting divorced? Baby, he has filed for divorce from Megan Good after nine years of marriage this week. Now, I got some questions for all y'all that bought their book, The Wake. Y'all getting a refund because now that the super sexy holy couple is getting divorced, does the book no longer um, carry any validity to it? And on top of that, you know, he's also petitioning the court for asking for no spousal support. And he's also requesting that Megan ask for no spousal support as well. Now, why do you think that is? And on top of that, who's the bigger star here? If Megan gets no spousal support, is she going to be okay? And obviously, Devin's out here preaching the, the gospel in these streets. And also, I think he's like a an executive in Hollywood as well. Are they both going to be financially okay if they walk away from each other? Which I'm sure... You know, they will be. But does this mean that they also had a prenup in place? Is that's why they're asking for no spousal support? And, oh, I can't help but think. 
why announce divorce the week of Christmas? Now, the reports are saying that they actually legally separated back in August, and now he's actually filing for divorce. Did he not want to have to fake his way through a whole nother Christmas with her? And does he have plans with a different parishioner slash tenderoni for Christmas? Because y'all know, now that they have announced divorce, the men are going to be in Megan Good's DMs, and the church women are trying to fight for this vacancy for first lady at his church or wherever he you know he preaches to the masses and i'm sure a few men too okay so all i got to say is i hate to see black love not win hell i hate to see love not win at all but according to their identical press release good pr by the way identical instagram posts except just the font of it all they're walking away from each other no one is at fault Somebody got to be at fault, child. You're not going to tell me nobody at fault. But nobody's at fault. They still love each other. And they will always love each other to the end of time. Great, great. Blah, 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 blah. What are your thoughts here? Are we sad to see this couple divorce? I'm going to tell you I am. But in the meantime, how many of y'all creeping into their DMs? And be honest. Okay? Let's move on. Ooh, we got new faces for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, y'all. Did y'all hear about the announcement? Two new faces are being added to the cast this season, which, by the way, doesn't it feel a little late to make these announcements since they've already started filming? And I know they had a little bit of a hiatus because a couple of people caught COVID on the cast and the crew, but we got two new faces and one of the new faces is ex-wife to Will Smith. Mm-hmm. So Sheree Zampino is going to be a friend of the show brought on by Garcelle, which we've seen Sheree before um, in Garcelle's very first season. I'm And good for Garcelle because she needs friends because the way Dorito and Lisa Rena came after Garcelle this last season, I'm not here for. So I need a little bit more kinfolk on this show, a little bit more solidarity, and a little bit more melanin, and we're going to get it. I hope that Sheree brings something good to the show as a friend of the show. And when I say good, you get about a couple of episodes to talk about Will Smith's sis. Do not make your entire time on this show all season about Will Smith. And when I say talk about Will Smith, girl, let us know what, is go what was going on when y'all was married. Because Will doesn't spill enough of his own tea. Jada spills her tea. We know Jada got some entanglements, but baby, we need to know what Will got going on over there. So if you're going to give us some tea, honey, make sure you don't, bog you don't overflow the cup and just bore us with all the tea. But make sure the tea that you give us is a nice cup full and it's piping hot what's really the real reason why you and will smith got divorced what was being married to will smith like honey and all these rumors floating about will smith on these streets honey true or no nah? that is what i need you to bring to the show as you gently talk about your ex-husband so much so that you do just enough but not too much for him to sue bravo or sue you okay now, Lisa Renna actually is bringing a new face on the show as well. And Diana Jenkins, who is Lisa Renna's friend, is getting a full-time diamond. And so we, Lisa got another partner in crime to start crazy mess with and to be shady with. But we shall see what this new dynamic will be because now the cast has grown, honey. We have Dorito, we have Sutton, Kyle, Lisa, Garcelle, Erica Jane, and Kathy Hilton and Cherie as friends of the show. So that's a nice robust cast. I hope they bring all the drama. I'm here for it. What do you guys think about these, these two new additions to the existing cast? I really kind of wish that Kathy Hilton got a full-time diamond instead, but I like Kathy, so I'm glad she's coming back to be a friend of the show. But tell me what you think here. Y'all think Cherie's and you know, is going to bring some good old tea and drama to this mess and put some of these girls in, in their place and into check? I hope so. Speaking of entanglements, looks like Real Housewives of Atlanta alum Nene Leaf got herself a new boo. And when I say she got herself a new boo, he actually looks a little bit younger than her late husband, Gray, which, you know, only means one thing to me. <laughs> Stamina! Ah! Baby, Peter Thomas, Cynthia Bailey's ex-husband, introduced Nene to her new boo, her new romantic interest. He's a Liberian, mm -hmm, an African child. He's from Liberia. He's a men's couture suit designer. And I'm going to mess up his name, child, because his name is real authentic to his native land. It is pronounced Neon Sila Seal. I apologize. I wish I knew how to pronounce it correctly because I believe in pronouncing people's names correctly. But baby, Nene is out here living her best life with him. She was just spotted down here in Miami celebrating his birthday. And a couple of days ago, she was in Atlanta all lovey-dovey and dancing with him on the on the dance stage. And for her birthday, surrounded by ex-housewives of Atlanta, 
Portia and her man, and friend of the show, Shamia and her man. Honey, it was an African party. Nene said, I'm back on the dating scene, and I am upgrading to an African. I just got one question. Where is the directory for these available Africans? Because apparently, honey, it's floating around here somewhere. Shamia, lend us the book, girl. Because we want to upgrade too. We, you got everybody in Atlanta dating an African now or and or planning to be married to an African or married to an African girl. We want a piece of this African dream too, sis. So Nini is out here looking like she's living her best life. She also said that Greg gave her permission to start dating. But y'all know, as the old folks would say, Greg ain't even cold in his grave. He's only been dead for three months and now she's out here dating. So my question to y'all, beauty bestie, is is she in the right dating so soon? And Greg's only been dead for three months, right? So do you think she was dating this man or, or courting this man or this man was courting her while Greg was dying? Because I would hope not. But who knows what understanding she and Greg had in the before he transitioned off. But she, like she said, Greg gave me permission to love again. And I think as she finds her way to love, she's having a good time. And it'll get, it looks like she's having a great time with this man, too. And I'm not even mad at it. Enjoy your life, sis. Live it up. Shamia, what is directory at? We see you, sis. Okay? And on that note, guys, I got to go. You know what to do. Subscribe to the channel if you like. Like this video if you like. Leave me a comment. Most importantly, check the notifications and make sure they're turned on. Who loves you? Yeah, me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'll see you Friday, which will be what? Christmas Eve? I love you a lot. Take care, guys. Bye.